Recap for a nanosecond. We have been working on truly trying to see spirit in a different way. So we worked on, um, in January, understanding our guidance, how to tune in, then to follow it, not just listen to it. And I know we're doing better with that. Yes. OK. We also talked about knowing that at our pure core, we're pure love. And we're doing better with that. Then we talked about standing in the universal Christ. How is that one going with you guys? I'm standing in the universal Christ. That's a big one. Then Patrick taught us that the body was light and to bring light into the cells. And then David talked to us about being children of God that we could inherit as a child, all this beautiful energy of God. These are principles that we really do need to take into our mindset in order to make them more real for us. Um, and in February, this is what our intention is, we're going to try to take some of our metaphysical ideals into a more personal level. So ready for that? OK. So before we get into today, I want us to just remember this is all about God. This is God's world. God is in everything. God is in the details of your world. God is in your thoughts, God is in your joy, God is in your experiences. When it's all said and done, what is there about God? Really think about it. What is there about God? When you melt your world down, each of you, and you say, okay, I'm losing my mind, nothing's working, and you melt it down, the only thing that's left in there is the people that you love. Right? It just melts down to a pot of people that you love. And then within that is the idea and consciousness that we are part of a creator. There's a God that, that loves us. So our adventures have God. Our failures have God. Our details have God, our joys. We are experiencing in everything we do relationships with things around us, but we are always with God. OK, say, so I am ready. OK. Life and Teachings, Book One. We've spoken enough about this. Um, I think you guys kind of know who it is at this point. This is by Baird Spaulding. It was written in the 1890s. Um, so one of the masters in the, I'm just assuming, I'm getting laughed at. I'm just assuming everybody is a faithful follower. <laughs> Okay, Life and Teachings of Masters of the Far East is a series that was written in the 1890s by Baird Spaulding. He had gone to the um, uh, Himalayas and gone on a mission trip and, uh, of exploration. So he met masters. This is what they said. Okay. Introduction. Done. <laughs> Not one of us has to conceive himself. Huh. We have been perfectly conceived and are always held in the perfect mind of God as perfect beings. When I first read that many, many years ago, that was one of those difficult things to grab. I am an idea in the mind of God. Well, I didn't like that, number one, because I wanted to be more than an idea, but I was missing the point. I was conceived in the mind of God. I don't have to create myself. I don't have to invent myself. I was conceived in the mind of God as a perfect being. How powerful is that? Most of us walk on the earth, and our mission is to become perfect, isn't it? I need to become perfect. Do you know, has anybody ever said to you, well, I can't be as perfect as you are, when they were mad and angry? Yeah. I'm mad because you seem to be more perfect than me. We struggle with this idea that there is something that we have to do, some hoop we have to jump through, some level of consciousness we have to achieve before we can finally be perfect in God's heart and God's eyes, accepted. And this is a race consciousness faulty thought that is eons old, eons old. We were conceived perfectly in the heart and mind of God. I stand before you perfect. I see that. Thank you. <laughs> Spoken by the man who could list my flaws in a heartbeat. 
but he did it. When you really can take that in, how much pressure comes off of you? I am perfectly experiencing this moment the way I need to. I'm perfectly experiencing this failure the way I need to. And I don't like failures, do y'all? I do not like them. They, they very much upset me. They said again, when we can think about this, we can know ourselves that we are in reality one with God rather than reality here. It is not the being of the form that we wish to change, this is what the Master said, but the form the being has assumed. We don't want to change who you are. <clears throat> we want to change who you think you are, the being that you have assumed. So very high belief, very wonderful belief, very expanding belief, very difficult to walk. When we look at the idea of perfect, we're going to look at the idea of the perfect man. Who was? Jesus. Mm. Thank you so much. Yes, it was Jesus. Jesus was the perfect man. And when we think of Jesus, what do we think? Love. Peace. And when he saw someone and healed them, did he not see them personally? It was a personal touch. They felt like they had been touched by a presence. They would touched by a man that they loved forever. There was a personal consciousness of Jesus. He was loving, personal, and he was God-focused. At every moment, he was God-focused. Now, he was also nonviolent. Dr. Errico is very adamant, and he's a wonderful scholar who researched with George Lamza the original Aramaic and Semitic languages and understands the idioms and the idiosyncrasies of what we inherited and what it really meant. And he said that Jesus, by living a nonviolent life and demonstrating getting your needs met in a nonviolent way was a uh, new idea to the people at the time. It was absolutely like, this is crazy. What do you mean? We need to take action. And, but his way was always to be peaceful, to stand your ground and be peaceful. And when a dear friend of mine and I have that discussion, he always reminds me of the throwing of the uh, money changers out of the temple. Do you all remember that story? Jesus went into the temple and he threw those people out. And he did it physically. Well, I want to share with you what really happened, <laughs> so you know. And I'm going to give you a correlation that maybe you can understand. The money changers in the temple would be as if you all come to church, you love this church, you may even be a member of the church, you've been coming for a long time, you come into the door, and some stranger that none of us knows is saying, hey, would you like to sit during the Sunday service? You need to pay 10 to $20 for your seat, depending on where it is. And they're taking money from you so that you can sit in your own church. That is the equation to the money changers. Who of you would not say, excuse me, who are you and why are you in my church? Well, we do it down the road at that church. We'll then go down the road. We don't do it. This is my church. This is my church. Who of you would not say that? You go, no, <laughs> excuse me. That's what Jesus did. There were people in the temple in his church doing things that was taking advantage of the people that were attending for their personal gain. So it wasn't that he became violent. He became, you're in my house. I am standing my ground. And in your house, you are responsible. Stand your ground in your house. See the difference? All right. So... When we look at the energy of Jesus, he was peaceful. He did everything with peace. He was loving. He was intimate. He was caring. That is the idea of perfect man. And the most important thing, continually and always focused on God. All right? See, I'm getting it. You like it? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to chapter 92. Um, this is a story of um, uh, Jesus is having dinner with some people in a village, and a fire breaks out. 
And there's a child that's upstairs and no one can get to the child and everybody is, of course, hysterical in our human consciousness. And Jesus says, to the fire, peace, peace be still. And the fire stops and he gets the baby and everybody is shocked. Everybody says, how can you do it? And Jesus says, when man comes to himself and comprehends the fact that he is son of God and knows that in himself lies all the powers of God, he is a mastermind and all of the elements will hear his voice and gladly do his will. What if you did that? What if you said to a fire, peace, peace be still, and it stopped? What would the world think of you? Would you be afraid to even tell anybody? because of what the world would think of you. You've lost your mind. Our world hasn't changed much, has it? But this is the consciousness that we must move through in order to become children of God. And Jesus said this, two sturdy asses bind the will of man. Their names are fear and unbelief. Until we turn those aside, we are caught in that consciousness. Fear and unbelief. So when we look at those two elements, fear and unbelief, we're dealing with thought, unbelief, and fear, which is an emotion. Fear freezes you, you know. Fear stops you in your tracks, and there is no motion. And unbelief, unbelief. Peace, peace be still to the fire. The fire goes out. What would you be met with? Unbelief. (laughs) Yeah, that did not happen. If I do not believe everything is about God in this world, how can I stand and exercise any loving energies that Jesus exercised? God, if we do not believe this is God's world, if we do not have a belief that is greater than what we see in the world around us, we are only going to continue to reflect what we see. We're going to reflect what we see instead of lifting into what can be. God's world. Do you believe this is God's world? You know, there are some standard uh, Christian faiths, and I can't give them credit because I don't know who who started it, but I have some friends that they'll always say, my God is bigger than this. And it's a little catchphrase that moves through some of the, the denominations. I love it. I love it. Because if I say my God's bigger than this, then I am living in a faith where I believe that God is greater than what I can see in the physical reality. My unbelief changes to belief. Were there not times in this past year when you guys went into unbelief? God has abandoned us all. And we felt it, didn't we? To the core. People are fear. We're frozen. We're in fear and we're frozen. This is God's world. Oh, no, it's not. It's not God's world anymore because we've got big powers that are playing, and I'm not saying that did not happen. There were big powers that were playing and still are. But it's still God's world. God, the spirit of life, all that we are, God's world. When you cross over, those big powers that you're fussing about aren't there. Do you realize that? Do you know where you go when you cross over? God's world. You go to spirit, God's world. God's world is here. God's world. We really need to, we don't really need to do anything. I would invite you to consider (laughs) thinking about where am I happy with the belief that I am limited And that I must succumb to every wind that blows? Or am I happy to feeling I'm God's child, unlimited, and God's world is greater than anything I can see? God's got me. Where is my greater joy? Where is my greater potential? Where is my greater ability to act as son of God? I need to believe I am to act as if. Right? I need to believe I am to act as if. And you all know fear. What pulls you out of fear? Love. Love. When you're afraid, what's the first thing you do? You find somebody who loves you. And you crawl into their arms. And you say, hold me. 
because I am afraid. And they hold you and they pet you and you calm down. Not because what you're afraid of has changed, but because love has come into your field. Someone's loving you. Could be friend, could be puppy. Did anybody use your puppies? You know, it could be anything, anyone who loves you. You just need a hug. You just need to be loved. Love melts that fear. And it evokes within us a different emotion. And love is an emotion of motion. Love is always moving. Fear is frozen. Love is moving. Do you see? So Jesus always focused on love. He always focused on truth. And he did not withhold love. You realize that when he walked? He gave love to everyone. If they wanted it, if they didn't, he would walk on by. Have a good day. He said, he said, I came for my own. I did not come for everyone. I came for those who need me. I came for mine. And he would say to the people, would you be healed? And if they said no, do you think he sat down and went, well, <clears throat> let me talk to you. <laughs> no. He said, bless you. I'm moving on. Moving on. Love. All right. When we believe in God, we can feel again. And you know, when you believe in God and you feel again, guess what you feel? Everything. You feel your sorrows, too. You cry. You feel your joys. You feel your exuberance. You feel your challenges. You feel. But do you know what it is to be locked in a frozen state of fear where you feel nothing but fear? What would you prefer? The motion or the fear? And another part in um, the Aquarian, these are also masters in a different space, and they are talking about mankind's evolution. And it's uh, chapter 59. The soul is drawn to perfect light by four white steeds. Faith and love are the first two. Faith to overcome unbelief. When you believe something, you have faith in it. You walk as if, don't you? When you believe something and you f have faith in it, you walk as if. God's world, this is God's world. God has me right now. God has you right now. We walk as if. Faith, it unhooks the unbelief. And love, as we just spoke of, unhooks the fear. There are two more of the steeds. Will and helpfulness. Now, these are steeds of action. We get frozen by the unbelief and fear, and we don't move. We need to unfreeze, and we need to move. What does will mean? The will, will brings perfection to you. Will brings you into a perfect state. Because you are taking the power I am, the power within me, and I'm aligning it with something. I'm willing it. I'm taking my will and aligning it with something. I can stand and say, it is my will to walk and know I am in God's world. Now I'm aligning my energy with that belief, my will. Do you see what I'm saying? We can believe, we can love, but we got to take an act. There's got to be something that we stand up for. The other thing is helpfulness. If I can take my will... Do you know what your will is? Let me just go back for a second. Do you know your core, that part of you that knows who you are? That part of you that goes, <clears throat> I'm going to do that. Do you know that part? That's your will. That's your will. I'm going to do that. It comes from within. It's not ego. It's will. It comes from within. It's like, yeah, I'm going to invest my energy. I'm going to do that. When you, that will aligns with something that's greater, greater, now you have the capacity to create and to achieve. And that leads us to helpfulness. Now we don't lose anything at all when we choose to lift a hand for someone, hold a thought for someone. You guys might have believed that you came here to this church this morning for yourself. Do you think that? No. No. But you didn't. You came to help this belief system. You came to help everyone who'll hear these words. You came to help this church survive. You came to help bring, join the lights that are asking to walk this path. You not only came for you, you came to contribute. 
And you, your spirit knows that. Your spirit knows that inside. To become perfect, believe, faith, love, get into motion. Honor the core strength you have and contribute. And did you come because there was a needy person here today? No. 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 Contribution isn't about finding someone in need or finding a victim that you need to help. Contribution is shining your light. We're shining our light to the world. We're sharing our light with the world. Helpfulness. When you smile at someone, you're helping them. You guys hearing it? Mm-hmm. Sounds easy to do, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have my belief that I live in God's world. I'm going to love. I'm going to actively love. I'm going to actively love. I'm going to align the power within me for good, and I'm going to let it go out and contribute to the world. That sounds like an easy path to perfection, doesn't it? What if I make a mistake while I do it? What if I say the wrong? What if I say yet again the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong person and someone gets angry with me or upset or hurt their feelings yet again? What if that happens? I'm trying to help. (laughs) I'm trying to be loving and kind. It wasn't intended that way. La, 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 la. But in my mind, don't I go, Cindy, maybe you should just shut up. Doesn't the human part of me go, oh, my God, what have you done? What's wrong with you? Am I the only one that does that? Instead of saying, you know what, Cindy, you're perfect. God will make it right. Whatever you said, whatever reaction to what you said, whatever happened is not of your doing. You were just being silly. How they react is up to them and God. Maybe they're learning something. Maybe they're seeing something. Maybe you're the only one that could have brought that to their realization. Let it go and keep doing what you do, even in the silly, silly things that you do. Because you're perfect. That was a good talk to Cindy, wasn't it? Because you're perfect. The world is a mixed consciousness. So in totality, it is not total unbelief and fear. However, there are moments when that's what it presents to us. But even in those moments, there is also love and helpfulness and all those other things occurring we cannot see. So when we see presented to us unbelief and fear, if we just say, nope, this is my house, this is my house, it's my house, that does not live in my house. In my house is faith. In my house is aligning with God, helpfulness and love. That's my house. And staying there. Do you see how much help we can do for the whole? And the beings that you might see that you feel are projecting unbelief and fear, guess what? They are perfect. They're perfect. They are equally as perfect as we are in the mind of God. They're equally as perfect. We don't know why they're having the experience we're having. We, they're having. We don't have any idea. Maybe their focus isn't on God. Maybe they are caught in unbelief and fear. We don't have no idea. We have to keep our idea on us. Focus on God. All right. Do you see how easy it is? Oh, so easy. All right. Again, I'm back to life and teachings of the Masters of the Far East. God is in the midst of you, child of infinite, immortal spirit. There is naught to make you tremble or despair, not to make you fear. From the bosom of the Father you came, the breath of Almighty God created you a living soul. Before Abraham you were, beloved now are we, sons of God, joint heirs with Christ. We are eternal. We are already perfect. We are already perfect. Take that this week into your mindset and remember those four horses. 
you can jump from unbelief and fear in a heartbeat. And it's interesting that in the analogies Jesus gave, there were horses. Unbelief was a horse, fear was a horse, and the others were horses. You can jump. See yourself jumping horses, if need be, to will, to love, to helpfulness, and faith. Let's go within. And just breathe. Father, Mother, God, I humble my heart. And I ask that your infinite spirit of peace just descend upon all who hear my words. Father, I ask that you lift us up now into that higher realm. And I would invite each one of you just to begin to feel a beautiful light just surrounding you. An expansive, bright, beautiful light just surrounding you. And just become aware very gently, you are standing in God's world, God consciousness, God's world. Breathe and feel the peace and the love. Begin to feel your essence, the image of who you are, vibrating in harmony with that peace and love. and begin to feel the perfectness of your nature. Perfectly unique, perfectly beautiful, perfect in every way. This is how you look in God world. This is how I am. And breathe. And Father, we ask to bring this energy back into our realities, into our personal lives. So I would invite you all just to take a breath, breathe in a lot of this energy, breathe it into your consciousness. Feel your awareness coming back into your physical body, into the chair in which you sit. And just send in your mind's eye, send this light of God love into your physical reality, whatever vision has come before you. The consciousness of God's world now permeates the details of my world. I have faith, and I am willing to share. I will shine my light. Breathe it in. Because I know. God and I are one. I am child. Take a breath. Feel your heart open. Feel the chair that holds you. And say, I am ready. I am ready. And gently open your eyes. Could you feel the expanse? Thank you. We are perfect. We are perfect. As you walk this week and something happens to anyone, I look at Bonnie, we may be doing accounting. Bonnie, remember this. <laughs> if anything happens that you're not in agreement with, just look at that other person and say, you are perfect. <laughs> Even though we're having this moment, Cindy, you're perfect. <laughs> Let's try that. Let's try being that, that child of God. Say yay, God. Yay, God.